Welcome back. North Dakota has the only state-owned bank in the nation, and across the country, campaigns to create more public banks have emerged over the past few years. There's a movement here in New York City. So what exactly are public banks and how do they benefit us? Joining us now to share more is Talsif Asan, a member of Public Bank NYC Coalition on behalf of NYPIRG. Welcome, Talsif. Thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, I'm uh, happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Happy to have you. So to start off, for those who are not familiar, can you tell us about Public Bank NYC and your mission? Sure. Uh, so Public Bank NYC is a coalition of grassroots organizations uh, from all around the city. Um, our goal is to come together in order to establish a public bank uh, here in New York City. Um, since then, uh, our mission has actually broadened. Uh, there's a statewide um, fight for public banking, and so we've joined that effort as well. Uh, but essentially, here in New York City, um, every single year, um, we put our tax dollars on deposit with Wall Street banks. Uh, here in New York City, uh, that amounts to uh, more than $90 billion. So that's a lot of money that we're talking about. Every single year, uh, Wall Street banks like Chase, Bank of America, TD, uh, they hold our money in the same way that, you know, when you get money, uh, you put it into a bank account. Um, and uh, when New York City needs that money, um, you know, we take it out, uh, use it on services like sanitation, public safety, um, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but the thing is that while Wall Street holds our money, um, they get to invest it into uh, whatever industries and projects uh, you know, they think it's profitable. So that means that Wall Street, uh, what they end up doing is they end up investing in some of the most harmful and destructive industries that you can imagine. So Wall Street is investing in fossil fuels, private prisons, immigrant detention centers, uh, the gentrification and displacement of our neighborhoods. And once again, because they hold uh, our city deposits, um, they're using our money to make those investments. So we, in fact, um, you know, by uh, by that property, we are investing in all of these harmful industries and investing in the destruction of our own communities. And so uh, the problem is that we don't have a public option, right? If we wanted to take our money out of Wall Street, um, there, there really isn't any answer for that, right? If we take it out of Chase, it'll go into TD or Bank of America, same problem. And so the campaign for a public bank is about creating that public option. If we had a public bank here in New York City, a public bank being a bank that is owned and operated uh, by New Yorkers, we could divest from Wall Street, right? Take all of our money, more than $90 billion back. And once it's in a public bank that we control, we would get to decide what projects we invest in. Uh, and so we really emphasize investing in, um, you know, environmental justice, uh, racial justice, worker justice, um, and small businesses. And so uh, these are the pillars that our uh, campaign stands on. Um, and we believe that if we divested from Wall Street and had a public bank, it would be much better for the city because we would be in control of our money, not Wall Street. Thank you so much for sharing that, Talsa. So um, you did mention some of the benefits of establishing a public bank. That was my next question. Um, so can you just emphasize on those on those different benefits and we can you know, show that on screen as well. Sure, sure. Um, so as I mentioned before, uh, we organize our campaign into different pillars, right? Um, that's something that we're really proud of uh, at our campaign. Um, we're very intersectional. Uh, we have environmental justice groups, housing justice groups, uh, small businesses, and so many other different, um, you know, coalition partners. And so if we had a public bank, essentially, uh, with money that we already have right now, if we had control of it, uh, we get to decide how to make those investments. So right now, a big issue uh, that we're seeing here in New York City um, is the disappearance of small businesses, right? Um, mm -hmm. Small Over 300,000 small businesses have closed their doors um, during the pandemic, and you know they're not expected to come back. A big reason for that is that Wall Street banks, they don't support these small businesses, right? Small businesses need loans. They need... Uh, uh, financial support in order to stay open. And Wall Street is not interested in supporting them. They're much more interested in supporting, um, you know, their uh, preferred customers, right? Large chain retailers. Um, and so if we had a public bank, we could give small businesses that kind of support. Um, for housing justice, uh, here in New York City, um, you know, housing is a huge problem. People can't afford to stay in their neighborhoods. And that's because landlords and luxury developers are spending billions of dollars to displace people from their homes, kick them out of apartments and communities that they've been in for a long time uh, and push them out 
and create housing that they can no longer afford, right? If we had a public bank, we could directly give money to community land trusts, um, tenant co-ops, uh, fund socialized housing, right? Uh, put money into all these models that are proven to keep people in their homes, to keep people in their neighborhoods. Uh, something else that you know we work on here at NYPIRG in particular uh, is environmental justice. Um, these Wall Street banks are some of the worst funders of the fossil fuel industry that you can think of. Chase, which is the biggest holder of New York City's deposits, they hold more of our money than any other Wall Street bank. They're also the biggest funder of fossil fuels among the big banks. And in the last couple of years, they've invested over $365 billion uh, in the climate crisis, even as we know, you know, our planet is getting hotter, uh, the climate is becoming more unstable. We cannot afford uh, to fund the fi uh, uh, fossil fuel uh, industry anymore. And yet this is exactly what they continue to do with our money. And you actually just put an, uh, up an infographic, um, you know, just a couple of seconds ago about how Wall Street banks have, um, you know, basically taken over uh, $1.6 billion uh, from New Yorkers in overdraft fees during the pandemic, right? So when New Yorkers have been struggling in this historic public health crisis, they have to pay for rent, they have to pay for food, they have to pay for tuition. Wall Street banks have charged them for not having enough money in their banking account. They charge them for being too poor. And so if we had a public bank, we could instead uh, invest in uh, community banks and federal credit unions that actually uh, provide equitable, responsible banking services to New Yorkers. Uh, they do a great job. They just need more money. And if we had a public bank, we could support that system. Right. Now, Tausif, thank you so much for sharing all this information. The Public Bank Act is currently co-sponsored co by three of our Bronx senators here, um, Jamal Bailey, Alessandra Biaggi, and Gustavo Rivera. What phase is the bill currently in and what is needed to propel it forward? Uh, yeah, so you listed uh, some of the really great um, you know, supporters that we have on our bill. I'm just going to add one more person to that list. I know you just mentioned um, the supporters on the Senate side. Uh, actually, um, on the Assembly side, uh, Assemblymember Victor Pichardo, uh, who's uh, one of your representatives here uh, in the Bronx, um, he's our main sponsor. So uh, that's really, really great. And we definitely uh, you know, love having uh, Assemblymember Pichardo's support uh, here from the Bronx. And uh, in terms of what stage our bill is in right now, uh, we have a lot of supporters, right, both in the Assembly and in the Senate. And essentially, mm -hmm. right now, it's up to the leadership uh, in, Le in Albany uh, to move it forward. So that's Andrea Stewart-Cousins, our Senate Majority Leader, and uh, Carl Heasty, uh, the Assembly Majority Leader, who once again uh, has uh, constituents in the Bronx. Um, and so uh, the ball is really in their court, right? We've mobilized the base. Uh, we've gathered um, legislative co-sponsors in both houses. Uh, and because it's the end of the session, uh, it's really our leadership who decides what bills are um, you know, put to a vote and what bills are passed at this point. And so we really need uh, assembly member, um, uh, you know, assembly leader Carl Heasty and um, Senate Majority Leader Andrea Stewart-Cousins uh, to really push it over to the end. Something that we know actually is that you know, because this is a big bill that's getting a lot of traction, um, Wall Street has started to lobby against this. And so mm -hmm. we know that um, Andrea Stewart-Cousins and Carl Heasty, uh, they're hearing from Wall Street and because Wall Street is lobbying them really hard. And so we need our legislative leaders uh, to listen to New Yorkers and not listen to Wall Street to really tip this uh, bill over, over the edge. We don't have that much time because we are at the end of the legislative session, uh, but they could still pass this legislation if they want to. All right. Uh, thank you for that. And shout out to Assemblymember Victor Pichardo. I'm sorry I missed you. You're a great friend of the of BronxNet. So shout outs to you for co-sponsoring this uh, this bill as well. Um, Tausif, if a public bank is established, can any New Yorker and any Bronx site um, create an account at a public bank? Who would qualify? Uh, that's something that a lot of people wonder, right? If we had a public bank, you know, when can I open an account? When do I get uh, my ATM card? So I just want to uh, clarify, um, you know, what our campaign uh, means in terms of average New Yorkers being able to access fair banking services. I think that's really what this question uh, gets to the heart of. Um, and so we know that uh, here in New York City, uh, New Yorkers face widespread redlining, right? Which is when mm -hmm. uh, Wall Street banks basically decide um, to not 
provide banking services or to only provide, you know, predatory banking services or high cost banking services uh, to New Yorkers. We know that this is something that happens in the Bronx and in many communities around New York City that are predominantly low income communities and predominantly communities of color. Um, so how would a public bank help regular New Yorkers get access to those banking services? So when we say that we want to establish a public bank, that doesn't necessarily mean a, a bank that would have a branch where you could get those banking services. It does not mean that. But the way that our coalition is working on this issue is that we are working to create a public option so that cities and local governments around the state can take their money out of Wall Street and put it into a bank. Uh, that you know they are in charge of, that they can manage. Um, most of our coalition partners are really envisioning just that kind of bank, right? Uh, where they have the opportunity to divest from Wall Street uh, and take back control of their own money. Um, that doesn't mean that a public bank can't provide um, low cost banking services. If a city around New York wants their public bank to have that sort of service, to have that sort of vision, uh, they can do that. And that's the beauty of the New York Public Banking Act. It lets every city, every locality decide what they want their public bank to do for them. Now, here in New York City, where we're not leaning towards that vision, we still want to support, um, you know, those equitable banking services. And our strategy to do that here in New York City is to have our public bank partner up with community banks and federal credit unions who already are doing doing this job of providing low cost equitable banking services to low income communities and communities of color. So for example, we have the Lower East Side uh, People's Federal Credit Union. That would be an example of a bank um, that already provides those services. And what a public bank would do is it would simply offer those banks more money, more credit, so that they could expand their services. They're already doing good work. Uh, the biggest problem is that you know they don't have enough money to serve everyone. But if we had a public bank, we could give that money to those smaller banks, to uh, community banks, to federal credit unions, um, to make sure that they're able to provide those services to as many New Yorkers as possible. Thank you so much, Talsa, for joining us today. Can you just provide more information where people can find out more and support the public bank NYC movement? Absolutely. So the best way to really uh, get involved and to plug in uh, is to follow our social media handles. So uh, you could follow at Public Bank NYC. That's the social media handle for our coalition. Uh, you could follow at NYPIRG. That's the organization that I represent, a uh, coalition member of Public Bank NYC. Uh, and if you follow us on Twitter and Instagram, uh, you'll be kept up to date on uh, what our actions are, uh, our press events, and what you can do as a New Yorker in order to, um, you know, let your politicians and let your legislators know uh, how to move public banking forward here in New York. Thank you again, Tosa, for your time today. Thank you. We'll be right back here on OpenBXRX today.